Hey y'all, welcome back to Prep the Truth. Welcome to this evening's video. Prepping is pointless if you don't know what you are doing. So we're going to talk about 10 mistakes that you want to avoid to make sure that your prepping is actually going to do you good when the need arises and that you are not wasting your time and it is not pointless for what you are doing and preparing for. So if you are new to this channel, please click that subscribe button down below. Be sure to tap the notification bell beside it so that you're notified when I upload new videos. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share so that more people can get on board and that their prepping is not pointless. So let's get right into this. All right, most people believe prepping is pointless. Like there's a lot of people out there that think there is no point in prepping at all. They don't believe a major catastrophe is ever gonna happen to them or even in general. So they don't even really prepare to, to begin with because most people don't actually know what they are doing. They don't have a steadfast action plan for how to handle it if it does go down, if something does happen. So majority of people will not go through a major catastrophe because they won't make it through it. But I'm gonna give you 10 mistakes to avoid to make sure that your prepping is actually going to do you good when you get to this point. However, prepping is not pointless if you truly know what you are preparing for and you have the skills to survive after a catastrophe. That is one of the biggest things. You can put back as much stuff as you want. You can purchase every survival item out there. You can do all of this, but that will eventually run out. And if you don't actually know how to survive or have the skills to survive after that, then it's not going to do you any good. Because we're talking about some situations that could go on for a long period of time, not just small, short ones. So, no matter how many gadgets you buy, no matter how much food you put up, you want to learn how to use that stuff and how to have these skills. So, let's start with number one. Number one is not knowing how to adapt. Knowing how to adapt is probably the most important survival skill you will learn because adapting to changing weather, changing resources, and other people can be the difference between life or death. Having the ability to adapt is why humans can live anywhere in the world. We will continue to do so as long as we are willing to adapt to a changing environment. This is very important because you can plan for something to happen in the summertime. And that's going to take one set of skills. Being able to survive in like what has just happened in a blizzard with minus zero temperatures, that's a whole nother environment. So you need to know how to adapt to different environments, different weather, you know, different resources of what you have. You know, if you've run out of this kind of food or you've run out of that kind of food or you've run out of your medical supplies, you need to be able to think on your feet. You need to be able to adapt in a situation and know what to do when something happens. That is one of the main and most important things because you never know what is actually going to happen. So we cannot prepare for every single scenario. So we have to be as ready as possible, but we have to be able to use certain skills in any environment, any weather with whatever resources we have. So that is where honestly your brain it's going to come into play as much as anything on your preps, and that's knowledge. Skills and knowledge of what to do and how to do it in different situations. Number two, something we talk about a lot on all of these channels is not knowing how to use your tools. You can buy every tool out there. You can stockpile all the cool survival tools, but if you don't know how to use them, it's not going to do you any good. You know, you can fix you up this nice wall of your saws hanging here, your medical kits hanging here, you know, all this stuff. But if you don't know how to use them, they're not going to do you not one bit of good in a situation when you have to have them. And you don't want to have to be learning how to use them in the middle of this disaster. That is the worst time to have to be learning how to use something, learning how to do You know, you got a medical kit and an accident happens and you need to use it. Well, you don't want to have to sit there and read an instruction manual on what to do under what situation while somebody could be bleeding to death or, you know, any circumstances like that. You need to be able to know what you need to do and when you need to do it. So, you know, if you don't know how to use a saw, you need to learn how to use a saw now. 
If you don't know how to use a hammer, learn how to use a hammer now. Now is the time to learn how to use a water filter. You know, anything that you have purchased off of this cool survival stuff, you need to know how to use it now and practice with it so that you're ready for when this happens and not wait until you're in that disaster situation. Okay, another thing is prepping for unlikely disasters. So right now when we think about prepping, we think about, you know, nuclear war, EMP, you know, earthquakes, blizzards, different things like that. You need to prepare for the most unlikely stuff. You know, we live in a tornado alley. We know that there's a possibility of tornadoes coming through, and we know what it takes if a tornado was to come through, what happens. You know, we can lose power, we can lose water. You know, we don't have access to roads because there can be trees down. All that kind of stuff like that. So you need to know in your area what your most likely disasters is, but you also need to prepare for unlikely disasters, just disasters that you might not be used to, uh, such as food shortages. We're prepping for that right now. We know how many shortages we have seen on food, just like right now. We've been sick this last week. We prepared with medicines so that we have it here at home before it got really bad and you can't hardly find anything. Because you can go in the stores right now, and there's nothing in them hardly. For cold and flu, coughs, you know, pain relief, anything like that, they're just about all the way wiped out. And have been for a while now. So if we had not have been prepared, not only would we have had to try to go out while we were sick, spread it to everybody else, and still probably not find anything to help ourselves because it's not there. But we have it here, so we were able to use it. We were able to stay at home. We didn't have to go get it. And the shelves may be empty, but it has not affected us right now on account of that. So we prepared for sicknesses. We prepared for empty shelves by purchasing that stuff ahead of time before we needed it. You know, doomsday prepping, it does cause you to be prepared for stuff, you know, like food shortages, EMP, nuclear war, things like that. But sometimes people forget the most basic things like preparing for storms or blizzards. Or, you know, power grids down. Just small stuff sometimes that can happen. You know, not having water coming into your house. If you're used to water coming through the faucet and just turning it on and having it that way and you've not stocked up enough. Or you don't have water filtration systems and things like that. A lot of people's not prepared for that. And it's something that can catch them off guard. Which is where we get to number four. And that is not storing your water properly. You can't live without water. Improper water storage will quickly become a deadly mistake. Running out of water because you didn't know how to properly stockpile the water means all of your efforts are wasted. So if you're going to go to the effort of stockpiling water, you need to know how to do it properly. Because it's not going to do you any good if that water is not safe for you to drink. You also need to have water filters. Way different, multiple ways to filter water so that if something was to come up and maybe you didn't improperly store it or something was to happen and you lose that water in some kind of catastrophe, you have a way to get to a source and to filter that water. Because water is one of the most important things because your body just has to have it and that's all there is to it. Number five comes in with something similar to that. Improper food storage. You need to know how to store your food. If you do not store your food properly, bugs can get in it, rodents can get in it, uh, it can just fall all together. If you're not storing food in a way that prevents something from getting into it, you're making a big mistake. That's just all there is to it. And you have to store it in a way to maximize the shelf life. You need it to last as long as possible. Now, we all rotate preps. That is something you definitely need to be doing. You know, use up, replace. Use up, replace. But you want to make it go and last as long as possible because the longer the shelf life if something happens and you can't be replacing that, then the longer you're going to have that supply. You know, if you've got something that lasts for five years and it's lasting for seven, then you don't have a long enough shelf life if you was to say package in a way that will last for 10. So properly storing your food is a major prepping mistake that a lot of people make and they do not store it proper. 
it ruins, it spoils, and then all of their hard work, all of their money just went down the drain. Number six is not having an SHTF preparedness plan. And what's good about having all the preps in the world but no plan or when or how to use them, you know, it's not going to do you no good. You need to know your area. You need to know enough about the people in your area uh, and things like that if something was to happen. You know, if you had to leave, where you would go, what you would take with you. You know, if you've got another place to get to, if you had to leave one area. You need to have a plan of what to do if certain scenarios was to happen. Because even a small, simple plan is better than no plan at all. Than being completely caught off guard and having absolutely no idea what to do when you need to do it. Number seven is not practicing your SHTF prepared list plan. You know, say you've not got but so long that you need to leave to go from one place to your other place. You need to practice that, have it in place of what it is you're getting, what it is you're taking with you, which way you're going, and practice that and see how long that takes you so that you know how long you have to get out the door and to where you're going. What's the quickest route? Everything like that. You need to practice it just like using your tools. You need to know how to use it. Number eight, and I know not everyone can do this, is storing all your supplies in location, one location. Keeping all your supplies in one location is convenient, but it could be better if you possibly can to store it in different locations. You know, in case you need to leave one. Your life depends on it. I'm not talking about bugging out. The only reason I would be talking about bugging out is maybe bugging out from one location to another because your life and your safety is on the line. And you need to leave this one area and go to the other area because it's safer. Having preps in two different locations can possibly save your life like that. If you can't do it, you know, try to hide your supplies in different places on your property. You know, don't put it all in one room. Don't put it all in one spot. You know, if you've got other buildings that's air conditioned or cooled or, you know, in an environment where stuff doesn't ruin Try not to have it all in one spot. There's just different things that can go wrong, and if it's possible, have it in multiple locations. Number nine is controversial but not controversial. And I say this like this because it's showing off all of your supplies. Yes, I have a YouTube channel. Yes, I'm telling all of y'all that I prep. Yes, I have showed my supplies. But I have a purpose for that, and I'm prepared for that purpose. And my purpose is to wake up more people to preparing. So, yes, I have shown my stuff. But if you don't have a channel and you are a prepper, unless it's someone you really know and you really trust and it's your prepper community near you, don't tell everybody that you're a prepper. Don't show everybody your supplies. Because when SHTF happens, a lot of them so-called friends can become an enemy. And they're going to be knocking at your door and they're going to want what you have. And if it comes down to it and you tell them they can't have it, they're going to want to take it. So don't be showing all of your preps and all of your supplies to just random everyday people. And the reason I said it like I did is because a lot of people are going to say, well, you are, but that's different. We are putting ourselves out there and on the line to try to help other people and to wake them up. That's just part of it. And number 10 Believing that you can survive on your own. Don't get me wrong. We all have heard the lone wolf prepper stuff. You know, I can make it on my own. Survive on my own. Most humans don't survive on their own. One time or another in your life, you're going to need somebody to help you. You might be able to live out the rest of your life like that, but it's kind of going to be miserable if you really think about it. You know, with nobody there, nobody to help you, especially if you want to get sick or something, you have to do it all on your own. Just more pressure and more stress. I know everybody says, well, I don't want to depend on anybody else for my survival or for my living. But it would help to have a small community, one friend, just one family member, anything to help you not just be completely on your own. To have your back in a situation where you really need someone. It would make life a lot easier than to try to go at it as a lone wolf all the way. I mean, self-sufficient, a lot of people says, well, you have to be self-sufficient. It doesn't mean 
be all by yourself. It means not depending on Big G to come in and save you. Because that's not going to happen when all this happens. That's going to be thrown all to the wind. And everybody's going to be on their own. You need to be as self-sufficient as far as your family needs to be able to take care of their self the best of their ability without outside help. That's what self-sufficient really is, not I'm sufficient. So that's my thoughts on this. Maybe this advice can help someone out there to make sure that your prepping is not pointless. So thank you so much for watching this video. If y'all have anything else to add, leave it in the comments down below. We will all try to help each other survive any kind of disaster that may come our way. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe. God bless you. And keep prepping.